up with it? My name is Sensei Julian. I am the Fortnite God. I am the best Smash Brothers player ever to touch a controller. I love sloths and I love memes. And I am the center director here at Code Ninjas Monterey. And I'm also one of the main senseis here in the dojo. And today we're gonna to be going over our game, one of the first projects that we built in the Game Builders Club here at Monterey. It's one of the summer camps that we offer. It's uh, one of the most popular camps that we offer here because it's so accessible for um, learners, even at such a young age as six, seven, uh, and all the way up. Scratch is such an accessible platform that really anybody, as long as they can read off of a book, then they are ready for a Game Builders Club. Uh, game Builders Club. So, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you guys Scratch and, and some of the amazing features of this platform that make uh, all the amazing things that we can do here at Code Ninjas possible. So right here, this is Scratch. Scratch was a is a website and a tool developed by MIT researchers at MIT, uh, specifically to make programming more accessible to children. So as you can see here, we have some featured projects made by the users of this site, other children. Um, and the thing that's really special about Scratch is it's a block coding system. So let, let me go ahead and find, for instance, here you go, Pie Clicker. The thing that's really special about Scratch is that instead of typing in code like you would normally see, I'm gonna go ahead and see inside this project. Instead of typing in code, into an, an IDE or an editor or a code editor. What we have here instead is we have code that's been abstracted into blocks. So these blocks of code are exactly the same as the code that you would write in an editor, except they are nicely color coded and organized into their different sections. And they connect together like blocks of Legos. So kids are, are truly visual learners primarily and with these blocks, it really, really makes it super easy for any kid to get into coding. The project that we're gonna be building today is one of the first projects that we make during the Game Builders Club. It's called Hungry Cat. And right here, here's my Hungry Cat, Julian's Hungry Cat. As you can see, I've, had a, I've added a bit of customization to the project. I have my cat right here, Scratch the Cat. I've given him a little bit of a mustache and I have an apple right here with a smiley face. So, uh, my instructions for this project are, Scratch the Cat is starving, move your mouse to the apples to eat them. So in this project, all Scratch the Cat, all we need to do is move our mouse around to make our cat, Scratch the Cat, follow us around. As you can see, it's a pretty simple project. We have a cat, he's hungry, he goes around to the apples, and he eats them. But all projects have, all programmers have humble beginnings from their very first Hello World program. Think of this project as your child's or as your very own Hello World, as your very first stepping stone to bigger, better uh, projects. So if we look inside here in, uh, into Scratch, we'll see that Scratch is primarily made up of uh, just four different windows. This central window right here is our editor. This is our code editor. This is what we use to um, program our game. This is where we drop our code into this blank space and then we connect them, these blocks together in order to uh, form in sets of instructions or programs for our sprites. Over here we have our blocks of code. I like to call it our toolbox. Um, I can click and drag on a block to bring it into my workspace, or I can drag it from my workspace back into my toolbox to, uh, and drop it back into the ether. Over here I have lots of different sprites listed, so I have my cat currently selected because he's highlighted blue, and so this is the instruction set, this is the code for the cat. If I was to select one of the apples, we would see the code for that apple instead. So this is the code for the apple. And we can see that I have this apple selected because it is highlighted blue. And the code here is highlighted into different uh, menus. So we have a dark blue motion menu right here for moving our objects. We have a dark purple looks menu for 
uh, making our characters talk and think and uh, change the way they look. Right here we have a light purple sound menu for adding sounds to our game. So as you can see right here, I have this little light purple play sound chomp uh, block right here. And that's what makes the chomp sound that you hear when Scratch the Cat gets too close to one of our apples. We have a yellow events menu. This controls when our code runs. So I have all of our blocks here set to run when the green flag is clicked. So this green flag right here. This green flag is our uh, this green flag is our start button. When our players play our game, they see they start the game by clicking on the green flag. So here we go, we have our yellow events blocks. We can also set our blocks to um, activate when a certain key is pressed, when a sprite is clicked, all kinds of different options here. We have an orange control menu. This modifies how often our code is running or when our code runs. So we can tell code to repeat 10 times. So for instance, let me move over to scratch the cat. I'll show you right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a repeat 10 right here. Let's go ahead and put a move 10 steps. So if I put this 10 steps inside of this repeat 10, he'll move 10 steps 10 times. We have some if then, so we can put conditions on when our code runs. So we can say only move if um, I'm touch if the mouse is touching the cat or something like that. Here we have our light blue or baby blue sensing menu. Uh, we have all kinds of little uh, pointed uh, conditions here. Like, is it touching, is the cat touching the mouse pointer? Is the cat touching the edge or any of our other sprites? We can see all our apples are listed here. Is our cat touching a color? is one color touching another color, so on and so forth. There's all kinds of different conditions that we can have that we can mix and match with our um, appropriate spaces here. Like if touching mouse pointer, then move 10 steps. Here in the green operators menu, we have all of the math that's available to us in Scratch. So here we can add two numbers together. We can subtract, multiply, divide. We can pick a random number between uh, really any set of numbers that we want. Um, it's just a matter of punching them in there. Uh, great, we have uh, conditions here, such as is one number greater than another, less than or equal to. Uh, we can combine them and say, is it equal to something and less than something else? And we can do the same thing here with our or statements and our not statements. Here in the variables menu, we can create variables. I, as you can see, I've already created one called our score. With this variable, I control, I count up to see how many apples Scratch the Cat has eaten. And that adds a lot of replayability and a lot of uh, a lot more fun to our game in general. And then over here we have my blocks. This is kind of an advanced feature for some of our advanced students. We won't be messing with it today, but know that Scratch is can actually get pretty advanced and we can uh, create essentially what are functions in Scratch. Right here, this is a fun little uh, addition to Scratch. The Scratch has uh, a lot of partnerships with different companies and different programs. And so if you have, uh, let's say a Makey Makey kit, you can program it using Scratch. Or if you have a Lego Mindstorms EV3 kit, you can program it using Scratch. They also have a WeDo 2.0 uh, programming menu here. And over here are some extra fun features here for, um, for creating uh, some, some fun projects. So here we have a music extension. This lets us uh, create instrumentation and, and uh, write some notation down to play a song or perhaps just to add a little bit more uh, musicality to our projects. 
Here we have a pen. This allows um, certain sprites to draw all over our game. Video sensing, this one's pretty fun. With this one, we can actually set controls with our webcam. So I could control a game using uh, the webcam and my actual physical body. It's part of a, a, a recent push for augmented reality projects and it's really quite fun and quite exciting. Scratch has an amazing tutorial on that. Here we have a text-to-speech section. Uh, kids love this a lot because it makes their computer talk and so they can make the computer say silly, ridiculous things like, oh, I'm so hungry, I can eat 9,000 hamburgers or something like that. So here we go. This is the game that we'll be making today. This is the finalized version of it. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm going to play it really quick just so you guys can get one last chance to see. Our score starts up at zero. When Scratch attack, the cat touches an apple. The apple disappears and uh, we gain a point. But it all starts with an empty project in the Scratch project creator. So here we have an empty game. All we have is our trusty cat, Scratch the Cat, and an empty background right here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to program controls for Scratch the Cat, and we also need to uh, add a background for Scratch the Cat. We could leave it empty, but honestly, I think no project is complete unless it has at least a little bit of background, something a little more intriguing than just an empty white space right here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to program Scratch the Cat to follow our mouse around this game border right here by telling him when the green flag is clicked in from the yellow events menu, forever, for the entire time that we are playing the game, we are going to point towards, go back to the motion menu, we're going to point towards our mouse, that's this cursor right here. We're gonna to point towards our mouse and move five steps. So now, when I click on the green flag, this two blocks of code is going to repeat forever and ever until I finally say, okay, I've had enough. Let's click on the stop sign and stop our game. So there we go. And just like that, we've already programmed some simple controls with just four blocks. So now that we have our cat following us around the stage, let's go ahead and get us, ourselves a nice little background. So simply by clicking on this button right here, we can choose a backdrop from the library of artwork that Scratch has made available to us. So right here we have a whole bunch of different backdrops that we can add to our game. I'm gonna go ahead, I think I'm gonna pick, let's say a farm. So here we go, we have Scratch the Cat on a farm. And now we need to give our poor, poor hungry cat something to eat. So I'm going to choose a sprite from the sprite library that Scratch offers to us for Scratch the Cat's Eat. So here, let's go ahead and take a look at the food tab. And I think I'll go ahead and have Scratch the Cat eat. Let's see, let's have him eat some fortune cookies. So now I'm going to give the, the code for our fortune cookies. And that is when the green flag is clicked, uh, we are going to have our fortune cookie show up again because if we didn't have it show up again when Scratch the Cat ate the cookie and the cookie disappeared, when we try to play again, the cookie would not reappear. And so we need to tell it, hey, when we, when, every time we start the game, every time we click on the green flag, reset the, the cookie so that it shows up again. So here we go, show, and then we're going to get forever. And then inside of that forever, we're going to nest inside of it a if-then block. This if-then block nested inside of the forever is very powerful because for the entire duration of the game, forever is going to continue checking if our fortune cookie is touching the cat. In this case, Sprite 1, because our cat has the name Sprite 1. So forever, if touching Sprite 1, then it's going to hide. Just like that, we have ourselves the basic features that we needed to make our game in the first place. But our cat is very, very hungry, 
and they're not gonna be satisfied with just one fortune cookie. So let's go ahead and right click on our fortune cookie and duplicate it. And we're gonna make as many fortune cookies as I think our hungry cat can handle. So here we go, we have tons of fortune cookies now. There we go, but as you can see, it's lacking a lot of the features that the other game, the finished version that I showed you, had. So this is the most basic level of the game that you could possibly make. And it's a perfect stepping stone for anybody who wants to get their feet wet with some programming. But if this isn't enough for you, if you're a little bit more of a, uh, ambitious and you want to try adding some features on top of it, absolutely go for it. That's absolutely what we did here by adding some custom artwork to our food, putting a little smiley face on them, putting a little, um, a little mustache on our cat here and adding sound effects. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna add some sound to our game. Let's go ahead and add some background music so that there's always some music playing in the background of our game. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go back to Scratch the Cat. I'm gonna grab a When Green Flag Clicked, Forever. And then I'm going to go to Sound and Play Sound Until Done. Now, if I just click Play right now, Scratch the cat is just gonna meow forever and it can get pretty annoying pretty fast. So we're gonna go to the loops over here in the sound menu and we're gonna add uh, just a nice little tune, something that we like. I'm, I'm a bit personally a big fan of this one right here. A little loud, let's go ahead. There you go. There, that's good. And then I'll just change it from meow to video game one. Perfect, awesome. So now what I'm gonna do is if our fortune cookie is touching our sprite one, I'm gonna make the fortune cookie play a sound. I'm gonna have it play, let's see, let's pick a sound effect here. Let's go ahead and pick, thank you Maricela Cancel for following us here at Facebook. I think I'll go ahead and grab the bite. That sounds good. Let me go ahead and turn that down, make it nice, a little bit softer. So now, when Scratch the Cat gets it, oops, we forgot to change it from pop to bite. Let's go ahead and try that out one more time. There we go. Now our fortune cookie makes a little bite sound effect whenever our cat gets to our fortune cookie. So what we're gonna do now is we've added Music, we've added some sound effects. Now let's add some variables, let's add a score. So let's go ahead, we're gonna grab, we're going to make a variable, we're gonna call it score. And at the very beginning of the game, we're going to set score to zero. And then we are going to change score by one every time that Scratch the cat touches this, our fortune cookie or essentially eats it. Awesome. So there we go. That part works perfectly. So now what we're going to do is we can duplicate our fortune cookie to add a whole bunch more uh, fortune cookies. But right now, um, our game is a little bit simplistic. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, because no matter how many uh, fortune cookies we add, ultimately, they're going to stay in the same place. And once we've eaten all the fortune cookies, our game is over. So... I wanna get something a little more dynamic, something a little more fun, so that the fortune cookies pop up in different places. Maybe you have to chase after them. Craig Barishman, thank you for liking the stream. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little more variety to our fortune cookies so that they're moving around the stage and maybe we have to chase them a little bit. So what I'll do is once we've gotten our fortune cookies, I'm going to have them Wait for three seconds. I don't want them to pop right back up right away as soon as we eat our fortune cookies. I'm going to have them wait three, three, three seconds. I'm going to have them constantly gliding to a random position for, let's say, four seconds. And then after three seconds, I'm going to have them show back up again. So now with just this simple change, Oops, let me go ahead and put this inside. So what happened was, 
my fortune cookie was busy gliding and so it wasn't detecting whether or not um, the cat was touching it. So what I'll do is I'll make a separate stack of code for this feature right here. There we go. So now every few seconds, no matter where I'm telling the fortune cookie to go, it'll pop back up again. And this adds a lot more variety to our game. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna duplicate this. Ellie McKindas Mitchell, thank you very much for liking the stream. So here we go. I'll go ahead and turn this down a little bit. So there we go. What started out as a very simple game without a lot of replayability, replayability has really turned into something that I personally can be happy sharing and showing off to my friends and saying, hey, come check out this game. Do you want to see how many, how many uh, points you can get or something like that? Last thing I'll do, just as a bit of a stretch, is I'm gonna add another variable called a timer. And I'm gonna make it so that the game ends when the timer runs out. So I'm gonna put time right here. When the game starts, I'm gonna to set time to 30. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna to go to the stage and when the game starts, I'm going to set time to zero. Then I'm going to put a little forever right here. I'm gonna put wait one second. And then every second, I'm going to change time by minus one. I'll set time to 30, so that way there's 30 seconds to collect as many fortune cookies as you possibly can. And then when this time is up, let me go ahead and instead do this. I'll use a repeat until instead of forever here. Grab a equals right here until time equals zero. Once time has run out once time is zero, we go ahead and stop the entire game. There you go. Looks like I've got a high score of 53. We're gonna share this game and I'm gonna link it in the comment section of this Facebook live stream. And I challenge you guys to get a higher score or even try to make a version of this game yourselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this Hungry Cat live stream. Go ahead and share this project now. Move your mouse and scratch the cat will follow. Oh, Move your mouse and scratch the cat will follow. Try to get as many points before time runs out. And just as a little flavor text, I think I'll say, Scratch the cat, I'm so hungry. Get as many fortune cookies as you can. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy the link here and I'll post it in the comment section of our Facebook live stream here. Hi, Gabe. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. All right, and that's all we've got pretty much for today. If you guys have any questions, I'll stick around for just maybe a few minutes and answer any before we, before we end the stream for today.
All right. Hey, how's everybody doing? Um, we hope that uh, you have enjoyed uh, these last few days and this opportunity um, that we've uh, been able to provide, um, you know, for our community members, uh, our Code Ninja families, all of our students. Um, we are hosting, I mean, holding um, a raffle opportunity for everybody. All you need to do is take a picture, um, kind of, you know, enjoying the stream and, and tell us a little bit about what you learned. Maybe throw a question out there, what you'd like to see in the future. Uh, and then just tag Code Ninjas Monterey on our Facebook page. Uh, and then we will select a winner uh, for a free summer camp. Okay, everybody here at Code Ninjas Monterey hopes that everybody is uh, staying safe and healthy uh, during this time um, kind of in our history. And as we uh, continue to move forward, we want the community to know uh, that we are here for all of your educationally based coding needs. And we can't wait to see you for our next session, which will be tomorrow. Same time, four o'clock. Hope to see you there. All right.